Friday, Texas Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick vowed to end tenure for public university professors who teach critical race theory in their classrooms. He tweeted, we banned it in publicly funded K through 12 and we will ban it in publicly funded higher ed. That is just one of the most recent examples of white Americans' refusal to educate students about the advantages of being white in this country. Well, if they won't let schools teach that lesson, then I guess I'll have to teach it right here, right now, in a little segment called The ABCs of White Privilege. There's a lot to learn, so let's get started. A is for assimilation. Assimilation is when people of color have to adjust natural things about themselves to make white people comfortable. This includes code switching, straightening our hair, and saying the Beatles are good. I'm sorry, they stink and they're not cute. <laughs> B is for Band-Aids being nude, and not just Band-Aids. Did you know that until recently, black dancers couldn't find tights or ballet shoes that matched their skin tone? The only options available to them were nude, but whose nude is that? That's not what I look like naked. I look like this. <laughs> See? C is for colonization. Europeans came to North America and stole this land from indigenous people, but we've been taught that Europeans were brave explorers when the only thing they actually discovered was syphilis. Wow, that, that was great. I think the audience learned a lot. D is for the doll test. Oh, there, In the 19... there's more. There is more, Tarek. The doll test. In the 1940s, doctors Kenneth and Mamie Clark conducted a test in which black children were presented with dolls of different colors. Their studies showed that most children attributed positive characteristics to white dolls because of societal perceptions. Sad, right? But if you ask me, Barbie wishes she was as fly as Christy. <laughs> e is for emotional tax. Now they should call that shit physical tax because I have broken my back dragging white people into the light and I'm sick of it. It takes its toll emotionally. Oh, that's where it comes from. F is for being followed around stores. I'm looking at you, Walgreens. G is for gerrymandering, the act of manipulating congressional boundaries in favor of a specific political party, otherwise known as racist Tetris. Oh, wow, you really did the whole alphabet. H is for something we can't get, good health care. Black women are three to four times more likely to die from pregnancy-related causes than white women just because they're black. And that's just pregnancies. You know they're up everything else. I is for implicit bias. Now, that's when we attribute stereotypes without our conscious knowledge. Here's an example. Crossing the street when you see a black guy, but not when you see a white guy, even though both men can and will kill you dead. And that's an implicit bias I have about men. Hey, you, uh... You know the show is only 22 minutes long, right? J is for justice for all. All white people. The ACLU found that black people were 3.7 times more likely to be arrested for marijuana possession than white people, even though their rate of marijuana usage was comparable. They say justice is for everyone, but it's really just for white people, like SPF 90. We really gotta speed this up. Okay, fine, buckle up. K is for Karen, duh. L is for laws, white people's fubu written for us, by us. M is for microaggressions. Examples include calling anything ghetto, asking us if we work here, or is that your real hair? The receipt said it's mine. Back up! N is for nanoaggressions, which are just itty bitty microaggressions. O is for oppression, which is also the name of Mitch McConnell's cologne. Oppression for men, available at Walmart, next to the guns. <laughs> P is for police brutality, which we all know disproportionately affects people of color. You know what else disproportionately affects people of color? Juveniles, back that ass up. It's like black people's sweet Caroline. No, 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 we do not have time for this. Fine! Q is for being qualified, but underpaid and underemployed. R is for reparations. We've asked for them in every way possible. Even then, Mo, run me my check and my mule. We didn't forget about the mule. I'm gonna name mine Dante. <laughs> S is for savior complex. When white allies feel like they are God's gift to black people, when we all know God's real gift to black people is rhythm. No, no, no. <laughs> T is for tokenism. That's the idea that you can only have one model minority in a group of white people. Now this practice is used to pit minority groups against each other for, in an effort for them to excel in white spaces. This is not to be confused with Tolkienism because there are no minorities in any Lord of the Rings movies at all. Amber, Amber. Fine. 
white. UVW, therefore upholding values of whiteness. The idea that white is always right is ingrained into the fabric of this country, when in reality, the only thing that is always right is the price and 90 degree angles. X is for xenophobia. Y is for why aren't we teaching this in schools? Why is this country so afraid to learn from its racist past and progress into a future where diversity, equity, and inclusion are the understood norm? And Z is for zebra. Yay, we made it! Yay! Now, see? That wasn't so bad, was it, Terry? Oh, well, I guess we don't know when Tarek will be back, but we do know the ABCs of white privilege.